Hey guys, thanks for watching One Road. I'm Jimmy. I'm going to be showing you an install of some weather stripping that goes on the vehicle side of the door area on a 1995 GMC Suburban. What I can say is that the doors now shut phenomenally well with this new weather stripping. Um, I was having a lot of uh, door shake issues every time I hit bumps. And so it led me to basically figure out that it was the doors that were shaking uh, every time I hit a bump and not anything else. And so therefore, uh, new weather stripping was on order. LMC truck, I'll put the link below in the description. Okay, so basically the only tools you're going to need is going to be uh, some sort of screwdriver, uh, Phillips, and that's to take out the three screws on the door sill. Um, I'm using, instead of a screwdriver, I'm using this awesome Makita 12 volt uh, drill here. I got a kit on Amazon for 99 bucks. It included this and an actual drill, two batteries, charger, and a bag. Pretty sweet. I'll put a link down in the description below. But this is the main tool you're going to need. You're going to need a mini uh, pry bar, um, something like this. Uh, maybe a, a flathead screwdriver would work, but this seems to work really well to get in pretty much every single area I need to get into. Uh-oh. Look at that. Someone's old spilled soda. Awesome. If you guys encounter anything like this, you're going to want to take it in and clean it off. This is just probably a spilled Coke or something like that. Um, I had to take one in the house and clean it off with just soap and water. It comes off really easy. Some of these panels come off relatively easy uh, with no effort whatsoever. Some of them, like this, it's going to take some ingenuity trying to figure out how to remove this enough to be able to get this weather stripping out. This piece, right in the middle, has a tab with a hook that hooks into something on the inside. So this piece, in order to remove, actually needs to be pulled up. The way I learned that was from the other side when I was pulling the weather stripping up and out. This piece actually came out. Something like this handle I would definitely recommend removing because it's definitely holding this piece on here. So I'm going to have to remove that. Okay, so it looks like I need a 10 millimeter. Uh, wow, that drill's nice. Now with those removed, this piece theoretically can be popped off. Here is the pillar. You can see where it connects. Glad to see that's reinforced, the handle there. Here's the actual plastic. You can kind of see how it came off. You can see the clips in there. There's one at the bottom, one there, <clears throat> and then these two tabs here. Okay, this is the easy part. Well, up to a point. Here's where I'm going to have some trouble. So this is what I'm talking about. I use a pair of tin snips and just snip it off. And then hopefully, if you pull hard enough, 
Okay, two hands. All of the weather stripping is now removed and you can see it's just beautiful white paint. Except for right there for some reason. I did not do that. That's strange. Got a bunch of uh, spilt soda down here, which is disgusting, but I'm just gonna leave it until I get new carpet in here, then I'll clean it. This black thing is to hide the wires in there, and it looks like the factory uh, actually accidentally screwed through it. That's supposed to be nice and tidy. And it looks like the factory screwed the sill plate through there. It's time to start installing the new weather strip. Here's an example of the old versus new weather strip. You can see a cross section here. Obviously the, the new one is the um, one that's in better shape here. The old one obviously is a little bit pinched from me cutting it, but you can see definitely the, the top loop is smashed and no longer retaining its its uh, elasticity I guess you could say. Okay so you can see the end of the weather stripping on one end has this little inserted glued in tube in there. It's a piece of weather stripping itself and what this is for is when you get to the end and you're butting the two pieces up you actually insert that little piece into the other so you don't have a dead spot there it's all protected once the door shuts and squishes all this stuff together lmc truck is uh definitely selling a good product there okay so i just decided to take this piece out i feel like uh, installing the weather stripping itself is going to be a lot easier with this piece gone you can see the tab how it it, it basically just slides in and then and then locks down so um, this one seems to be a lot easier than the driver's side um, because in order to get it back in, I'm just going to be able to fish it in and, and fix it there. So when installing the weather stripping, I'm not sure if that's what this little notch is for, but I always start it right there. It seems like that could be what that notch is for, for some reason or another. I pretty much start one end there. And I always start with this end down, so I don't have to cut this end. Start with this end, with a little notch hanging out, or the little uh, extra piece hanging out. That way when I get to the other end, I can chop this one to length, because they're always a little bit long. It's usually about a little bit too long. So you're gonna need some sort of tin snips like these in order to cut through this stuff to you know, make it an even cut and be able to slide this in the other end. Basically just push it on, there's no sort of glue or anything holding it on from the factory i would definitely recommend when you get to the corners make sure you have it fully pressed in and then try to slide some down to give it some more slack there just to make sure because the corners are going to be where it's going to want to pull out of uh, if there was any sort of tightness issues. So make sure as you're doing this and you're going along, you're giving it lots of slack and you're not just trying to extend it, I guess you could say, uh, to get the most out of it because it is long enough. See with that, with that little extra piece gone, this is going in really, really easily. Um, and I always go back through and make sure that it's all in there and I'll kind of push into it to make sure that there's enough enough slack in there. <laughs> Get some more in there. Okay. Very, very easy process as far as installing this and removing it obviously. This is going to be tough. Yeah. Get in there. Okay. Little 
by a little. Little by little. Okay guys, so these are gonna be the really tough spots. Uh, I'm gonna have to use some critical thinking here trying to figure out how to get this on. I only have this much left. So, like I was saying, there are some spots that are insanely difficult. But, where there's a will, there's a way. What I had to do was get my little pry bar. I went right behind the point where it was not on yet. And I just pried this back as far as I could and pushed at the same time. And this little lip here on the body panel just popped right over it. Of course, I pushed inward on this to give it some slack like I was telling you. And you can see how much extra there is. This has happened to all four pieces. So they do give you extra. You're basically gonna have to just eyeball it and use your tin snips and snip it off. Okay, so I need to take off just like another millimeter or two off of here. It's, it's actually making it bow up behind it. So I cut it just slightly too long, which you can see. I'm just gonna take off a little bit. All right, guys, you can see it's all done. So I snipped a little bit more off of this actual metal part. Um, and then I left a little bit of length, if that makes any sense, on the rounded hoop, which looks like it's mating up just fine. And you don't really have to worry too bad about like this looking like a hack job like it does, um, because remember, the, the sill plate is gonna be covering all this. We're good, it's fully installed. And uh, yeah, it, now is the easy part, just putting it all back together. Although, I am gonna have to contend with this, so let's see what we can do about that. Okay guys, project is done. You can see the sill plates installed. I corrected the problem that the looked like the factory had done, which was screwed through the um, wiring protector. Um, that's all exactly as it should be back in the original, well, supposed original locations. Um, everything is perfect. Um, panels all fit nice and tight. No wiggling or anything like that. I actually found one of the clips in this panel was misplaced and bent probably from the factory again. Um, but I was able to uh, get it into the right spot and bend it back and everything looks good. So um, we have nice, thick, plush weather sealing now. It's very tight. When you open the handle, it actually pops the door out because the weather stripping is so tight. So let's see how it feels from the inside. It's hard to shut. That didn't shut. There we go, let's do it again. Nice, nice and tight, guys. I'm extremely happy. Um, LMC truck, I'll put the link below. Um, and also the link to that uh, Makita drill set that I had. Amazing drills. Um, but anyway, uh, weather stripping is done on all four doors. Already with just those three doors done, uh, there was no more door rattling when I hit bumps. No matter what kind of bump or, you know, kind of messed up road, pothole, whatever, uh, I didn't hear any door rattling. So huge plus on that end. Um, and obviously I'm gonna have the benefit of no wind noise leaking into the cab or anything like that. So um, this is a huge upgrade for any vehicle like this. I believe they are from 90, what is it, 91 or 92? 
up through 99. If you have anyways, a CK, 1500, 2500, 3500, whatever, and you're hitting bumps and your doors are just rattling off, your truck sounds like it's gonna fall apart, it's most likely this weather stripping has just gotten flat and the doors are just rattling in and out. So replace your weather stripping. It's very cheap. It's relatively, I would say, moderately difficult to do just because it's really tight um, in some areas to get it in and out. But it's worth it, I think. Um, it took me for each door probably about an hour to two hours just because I was making sure I was doing it right and um, not screwing anything up. So. Um, that's that guys. Thanks for watching One Road. Uh, subscribe for more videos like this. Peace out.